What's up, everybody? The roller coaster ride with the Minnesota Vikings continues today as we are 3-3 three three in the 2024 season. We are a good bit behind the Green Bay Packers right now with a key head-to-head -head coming up. And we have hit the trade deadline here in Week 8. I really don't like having the bye week before Week 8 because this essentially means we play 6 out of 17 games before the trade deadline. I saw that... Uh, a lot of teams are kind of wanting the NFL to move their deadline. I do think it's going to happen. I think they'll eventually, maybe next year, move the trade deadline to week 10. It just feels like it's too early. And there are so many teams around 500 because there's, you know, the league has a lot of parity. It's not often to see teams at this point 7-0 and or 0-7. Oh Most teams are within a game or two of being 500 and can convince themselves that they should be buyers when a couple more weeks might provide a little more clarity. But we should at least take a look. You know, I don't consider us to be in sell mode right now, but there are still some moves you can make for the future if there's just the right situation is all. So you also keep in mind, like, yeah, you have like an older running back, like a Dalvin Cook, but... He would also have trade value in the offseason. It doesn't have to happen right now if we want to make a trade. And obviously, 3-3 three and three here, we're still thinking about trying to win this year, going for the playoffs. So, it's a weird spot to be in when you're hopeful to be a playoff team, but you're not hopeful to be a great playoff team. But here are the players who are going to be free agents at the end of the year. We have Anthony Hitchens, a veteran who I think is here for mentorship. Justin Jefferson, we have to start the negotiating here, and we're looking at five years, $151 million, and with little interest, this could turn into a franchise tag situation really quick. We got Daniil Hunter, Fletcher Cox, Chase Edmonds, Harrison Phillips, Mitch Wisnowski, CJ Ham. So I wouldn't say that it's a, a year with a lot of players we should look to trade or anything. But why don't we get the ball rolling here when it comes to the Justin Jefferson situation. He wants to play with the franchise quarterback, does not see Hurts or Hudick as that guy. Warm weather, yeah, that speaks for itself. No income tax, so no interest here really in re-signing for Jefferson. But there's something persuasive about 30 plus million dollars a year. Let's boost it here a little bit. This is my initial offer to Justin Jefferson. It does not work. I see this eventually being a franchise tag situation. Now, if we end up tagging Jefferson at the end of the year, that means a guy like Daniil Hunter either gets big money at 30 years old or walks for nothing. Daniil has six sacks this year, probably has played his best football earlier in his career, and he can still be a good player. If Daniil Hunter ends up leaving, we're going to need to get real serious about upgrading this edge rush. Obviously, Montez Sweat is here on a free agent contract, so that helps. And that was kind of part of the plan here, helping us bridge the gap after Daniil Hunter. I guess I have to move him here. Let's just list him at uh, the other linebacker spot to make everything easier. So even though we might not be like this great playoff team, do I feel like I have to trade Daniil Hunter? Not really. I think we have a lot of good young talent on this team, and I don't think like... We're really hurting to get more picks. We already have, you know, probable cap space coming up and opportunities to get players. So I'm not desperate to trade. I don't really optimize for the future as much as everybody else. And maybe that's wrong to hold on to a team that's maybe more middle of the road and try to catch fire at the right time and make a nice run. But when I see us having a chance to possibly have a good year, I, I try to take it. We also have to set our scouting national focus for this week, and I already set the scouts, so I think I basically made this decision at the start of the year, but we are still looking for those impact corners, and I still love the value. Like, when you can draft a guy, like a sauce gardener, and he immediately comes in and helps transform the defense, that's what I'm always chasing. Cornerback is still going to be a big-time focus unless we can get that top guy like there are certain positions where I feel like just give me average you know tight end is one of those spots 
linebacker is one of those spots sometimes safety but i want top end talent at corner this is the corner class by the way and there are a few players here at the very top tyrese mitchell is the number one 511 210 pounds he's kind of more built like a running back that's 511 210 i don't think there are too many corners in the nfl with that build he's 23 years old and so you want him to come in a little more developed if he is going to be an older rookie and thankfully he is b zone press and man coverage he is a good athlete and awareness is a to c so there are no holes to poke in his game here that concern me he's even a good tackler so tyrese mitchell looks to be uh deserving of top five praise down you have Rayshon Brocker, 6'1, 192. He's a man cover corner with good press ability, and that's kind of something I look for in tandem. Just the way Madden plays, like man coverage without press ability is kind of useless because just the way the game engine has always worked off man coverage is kind of a waste of time because corners don't break and close gaps on especially like quick passes well enough. You got to get in their face. You got to jam. So Brockers could be solid. You want a little more data on him. Chris Bush, 6'4". So that is uh, really tall for a cornerback here. We're getting uh, an interesting player here who doesn't have the best press ability, but he does have, you know, possibility of being pretty good in zone as well which uh, you kind of look for here a lot of times with these taller corners, you don't get them to be as athletic. So they got to make up for it in some areas there. And he looks to just be an okay athlete. Russell Lynch is our first zone archetype corner here in this class. He is under 200 pounds, a little smaller, maybe more of an inside defender and uh, D man coverage, B zone coverage, B tackling, kind of a slot guy here. I would say more second round at the earliest is where I would project him at this point. And if we just take a quick glance at the right side for those top four ratings, you see that uh, cover skill can be a bit hard to find in this class. Some players here, at least A to C, there's a chance it's good. Alonzo Heath out of Minnesota, aggressive ball hawk for better and worse. That to me is a positive, but poor to marginal speed, kind of a, a non-starter there. Like that's really concerning. You can't have slow corners in this league. James Davis, we go to another undersized man-to-man -man guy. Good to great speed, great to elite acceleration. This is more what you look for. C press, D zone. So a project at corner, but B kick return too. So that kind of, you know, factors in. You hope that means the athleticism is pretty uh, trustworthy there. And uh, you can develop the skills around that athleticism. So he goes on the board. Then you get into more of your uh, day three guys. Sherrod Carmichael. A press, A to C zone. Give me one standout trait here or a couple in day three. And uh, I'm interested. If he were a good athlete, he wouldn't be a day three guy with that like A press and A to C zone coverage. So, you know, not as good of an athlete, not great in man coverage, but a couple things to work with. So it kind of seems like if you want a true starting corner immediately, it's not a deep class. And I would mostly be looking at the top two guys here with uh, Tyrese Mitchell being far and away the best cornerback in the class. I'm not sure when the most recent mock draft came out, but this is where it is. And we have quarterback going number one there to Pittsburgh. Bad uh, signs there for Kenny Pickett. And another quarterback here, Tyrese Mitchell going ninth to Tampa, which at least if he's not going in the top five, he's more tradable, easier to move up if you have to, especially if you're somewhere like 12. So I don't think I'll be making any trades I think we're okay with the team the way that it is. And now we get a 4-3 Houston team that is playing a rookie quarterback this season, Carl Kiernan. No Andrew Booth and no Ezra Cleveland in this game for Minnesota. I wanted to simulate this game probably to the fourth quarter. 
it is that pivotal trade deadline week so i'd like to see a little bit of the game if it's close he's not playing right now but we are getting development from richard hudick do we want to go improviser here let's see still feel like some of that accuracy has to get better strong arm feels kind of the way to go he does go to 74 overall and we get deep and throw power for him so that brings throw power up to a 91. khalil offered he has 64 block shed 68 power move with hidden dev here for probably one season do you want to try to make him an effective pass rusher off the bench or run stopper it's tricky i think we'll go power rusher with this upgrade and just hope maybe block shed sneaks in there it did and then we get jd mcgraw the rookie right guard out of usc and let's go with a power upgrade overall it doesn't budge we get five ratings Ooh, an ability slot oh that means he's at least a superstar all right spoiler alert madden wow that is so big to get above like a star dev at offensive line it's so tough they don't get the breakout chances they only have a couple ways they can upgrade even in this game it is just so much luck that goes into it and it's nice to have it on our side Lewis scene going with the coverage here and yes we are on all pro hopefully I do not uh, forget to check this when I open up the file at all that has been uh, an annoying part of this season one last thing before we get into games for the day yeah this would be a good idea here let's just get the budding commander get the increased XP oh I can't yet getting a little ahead of myself I have to first buy the receiving one what I really wanted to do is get a focus player slot and that is all the way down there I'm gonna go with the offensive coordinator side of this talent tree just because it'll help out it's you know possible quarterbacks playmakers I feel like I just need that development more on that side so I have to work my way down here and then we can get the extra focus slot. Oh, not yet? Oh, can I go both sides of this? Yeah, I wasn't quite sure how it worked. But maybe for the time being, it's best that I get the uh, budding commander unlocked first. Now let's hope we can move above 500. This is a tough Texans team at 4-3 and three right now. They have a rookie quarterback. We'd love to uh, force some mistakes from him. But I do want to get this game into the fourth quarter, see where it is, and if it's worth jumping into as we start out with a 7-0 advantage. We then go up 14-0. I see an interception in there. Vikings up three possessions here at the half. The second half begins. We increase the lead further, and the Texans are struggling. We have intercepted Kiernan twice. His numbers don't look very good at this point. Hudick actually got in for a few passes. It's 19 yards. Jalen Hurts, one touchdown, one pick. Tony Pollard's on this team now. Oh yeah, he wasn't with us in this series. That was the renovation rebuild. Got so many series going on here. 42 yards for Dalvin Cook right now. And then Quan Alexander, a five catch day thus far. John Mechie, 4 for 44. T. Higgins, 76 yards. A quiet one, though, for the Stars, Jefferson and Cooks. So there might not be much to see in this game, and we can move towards that Green Bay matchup as the Vikings are at the 34 of Houston. And this is Dalvin Cook with a stiff arm and a first down. Herb Smith shaken up suddenly. Dalvin Cook up the middle with a good run. He's up to the 23. Crossing and Russell, the tight ends on third down as Hertz throws across the middle. It's crossing. He breaks the tackle and breaks in for a touchdown. I see crossing as the future starting tight end of this team. And depending on Herb's injury, it could come even sooner. Well, at 500. 
And with me giving the team a vote of confidence but not trading away anybody, this is how you want to play coming off of that. Carl Kiernan throws it deep and a penalty down. That's Brandon Cooks. He makes a phenomenal play. Oh, come on. If you're going to interfere, you can't let him catch it too. Kiernan on second down. He's in trouble. Working to his left. He's got a touchdown. We pressured him right into an open look. Let's jump ahead now. Five minutes to go in the game, and I have put Richard Hudick in. We're up by 20 with five to play. I might not see him throw much here in this, but at least he'll get a few snaps. Maybe he'll throw a couple times. If I can sneak him in there for a few snaps, I will. Handoff going to Chase Edmonds on second down. A little concerned that Dalvin Cook is not in the game. Third and inches now for the Vikings, and they stay on the ground. It's Edmonds, first down. All handoffs so far for Hudick as Edmonds dives inside to the 25. On third down, that's a first for Edmonds, and he'll take it inside the 10. So we won't see Hudick throw in this game. All handoffs for him. A few XP coming from just being on the field. Vikings win it 34-14 in relative easy fashion. And we move to 4-3 on the season. We end up here. 210 yards for Jalen Hurts. Two touchdowns, one pick. It's an all right game. 84 quarterback rating. And then Dalvin. There is an injury icon next to his name. We'll have to check on that. And same goes for Irv. Nice day for the pass rush. Wow. And they didn't get to us once. And we'll upgrade Keith Boyce coming out of this game. Little finesse boost there. Not a whole lot for the second year center. And we don't have any injury updates here. So that's a good sign. Let's move on to week nine. No injuries for the Vikings. Great news. I did want to take a look at that injury slider, though. It just seems like there are too many slider or uh, too many injuries happening. Oh, but it's at 25, so I'm not touching it. All right. Four and three Vikings, four and three Jacksonville Jaguars. We have a breakout linebacker this week. It is going to be Montez Sweat, the veteran. Could he really take that next step? He needs two sacks, two tackles for loss. That's not a lot to ask for. But this is the first game of the year I just wanted to straight up simulate so we can get to this pivotal Packer game. There's Dalvin. He's good to go. Remember last year when he uh, tore his labrum and then played against the Steelers on Thursday night football? Like, that was, that was uh, another level there. He went for like 200 yards in that game. So he got banged up in this last game. He's back for the short week to take on Jacksonville. Holy cow, 42 to 28. A huge offensive day for Minnesota. One of our best. No way. Jalen Hurts must have gotten hurt in this game. Richard Hudick played about half the game, it looks like. He threw three touchdowns at 113 yards. Four total passing touchdowns in this game. Wow, so he got in the game briefly in the previous one and now played a good half of it. And apparently played extremely well. Wow, this quarterback situation gets more interesting every episode. Dalvin, 59 yards. Healthy, 36 for Chase Edmonds. And then Corey Davis had a monster game. But Justin Jefferson and Quan Alexander had very good games themselves. T. Higgins... Him too. All three of our top receivers did well. And for whatever reason, Cross and outperformed uh, Irv. But we did have two interceptions. No sacks in this game, oddly enough. And Montez Sweat had a, a quiet performance that will not earn him an upgrade. Short week was not an issue for us. And we will get 2,500 experience for the entire offense. Those scenarios are uh, pretty valuable, as you can tell. 
And that's going to lead us into uh, one of our biggest games on the schedule. We have the Green Bay Packers. We are facing them for the first time this year. We face them again in week 16 at Green Bay, but this is the home game for us. And at five and three, we're feeling pretty good right now. Want to spend these staff points here as well. And I will get the extra experience here for quarterback that gives us 20%. So we will remain having Jalen Hurts as the starting quarterback, but good things here for Richard Hudick. And thankfully, uh, you know, when he got on the field, he did play pretty well. So that's going to help out his progression here. The 2,500 bonus obviously helps. Three touchdowns, though, is 225 XP. And the passing yards contribute a little bit. Hopefully, practice goes well this week. We want to be 100% for Green Bay. There were no injuries on offense. And we're as healthy as we can be going into this Week 10 battle. Let's be confident here as we take on Green Bay for the first time this season. They've looked beatable the last few weeks, but we have a locker room full of guys ready to step up to the challenge. How about Justin Jefferson getting even better somehow? Greg Crossan, I feel really good about. The little bit we've seen has been impressive. And like every rating there goes up, including his speed and short route running. 84 speed now. You're starting to get into a pretty good spot there. 70 run blocking as well. Yeah, Greg Crossan is going to be the guy for us. 84 break tackle. Oh, that's just temporary. Right now, Keyshawn Oldham has a plus five temporary boost because of the uh, scenarios playing out. He has 99 tackle for this game. Here are the Green Bay Packers. Jair Alexander, Kenny Clark, David Bakhtiari, Aaron Jones, the usual players that we're used to seeing. Aaron Jones and Brett Fisher are the running backs and the wide receivers. Hey, they made a couple moves, all right? Darius Slayton, Christian Watson, Kiki QT, Romeo Dobbs, Jonathan Patton. It's fine in Green Bay. They're eight and one. This team can be beat inside, though. The guard situation is nothing spectacular. But uh, where this team should be really good is with their defense. Kenny Clark's still there. Jermaine Allen is a rookie outside linebacker out of Georgia. Drafting two Georgia defenders in 2022 wasn't enough. Quay Walker, he is with Devondre Campbell. Preston Smith still there. I mean, the team just hasn't changed a whole lot. Wow, 81 safety, Daryl Davis. Let's check him out quick. Number 46, Star Dev out of Arkansas. Really good, uh, well, of course, with plus 10. Pretty good tackler. Kind of got the whole Lewis Seen skill set going on. Kicker, though, Jake Verity. 95 power, 74 accuracy. That could be a journey. A win today would put us at 6-3 and three and give us a fighting chance to catch Green Bay here in the north. A loss, and it almost hands the division to the Packers in Week 10. All right, let's play some football. It's starting to get interesting here in the Vikings franchise for perhaps the first time of the series. We have a chance to legitimately become a playoff team. We're on the right track right now with Jalen Hurts as the team's starting quarterback. And we'll start first and 10 at our own 31 following a pretty good kick return. And Jalen Hurts will dump it across the middle to Quan Alexander. Three tight ends in the game now for Minnesota as Hurts has to get away and cannot do so. He gets sacked by Devontae Wyatt. I don't know why our second play was a three tight end play action shot or something. But I guess it's my playbook. I'm the only one to blame. Third and 11. Hurts airs it out. Too far for T. Higgins. Aaron Rodgers. He's got to be 40. 24 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. 
We'll see what's in store today against a Green Bay team that I expect to be really tough to beat. Empty on play number one. All right. Three-man rush for Minnesota. Too much time. Rodgers scanning. He'll eventually throw it deep and wide open is Romeo Dobbs. I mean, what do you expect? Yeah, I'm going to be really critical of the interior pass rush. I mean, we bring in Fletcher Cox, Deron Payne. He's not like a pass rush first guy, but against this D-line or this O-line, he should do well. So if they don't, we're going to see Dion Robinson, our rookie first round pick, come in and try to get his first real impact. But the Packers moving down the field. This is Aaron Jones inside the 15. Rodgers on second down. Under pressure for the first time. He's got a touchdown. Into the end zone goes Kiki QT. And the Packers strike first. Drive number two for Minnesota. After the impressive showing from the Packer offense, and that's a first down catch. What you worry about in a game like this is I think we're going to play under pretty consistent pressure. And if that's the case, how many touchdowns can you get? Because you might need four to win a game like this. As Dalvin angles outside, he gets a gain of four. If Dalvin goes off, I mean, that would make life a lot easier for our entire offense. Second down, it's Jefferson, and he fights for the first down. But back to Dalvin now on first and 10. He'll fight through some contact and work his way to the Green Bay 44. A good running game has given this team fits for the better part of a decade now. Second down, and Dalvin off tackle, staying on schedule. Deep drop. Hurts on the move. Alexander with the catch. I like it. Three already for Quan Alexander. And now dumped off to Dalvin Cook. Looking pretty good on this drive. Nice calls, Brian. Throwing on first down and working to his left. A little reset there to get Dalvin Cook. Just a really efficient drive. And it's kind of the way we have to, to play here with this offensive line. Second down. And Alexander again. But can you keep it up all the way to the end zone? Here we are at the 13. This is Dalvin Cook. He has an angle. Breaks a tackle. And he's down to the one. Just run the Eagles QB sneak here. First and goal. It'll be Dalvin hitting the backfield. First bad play of the drive. Success rate is an interesting metric that I like. And what determines a successful play, as we will run it inside for no gain, is getting 40% of the necessary yards on first down, 60% of the necessary yards on second down, and then getting conversions on third I think these two runs here in the red zone have been our first two unsuccessful plays of the drive. Third and goal for Jalen Hurts. He's got to throw it now, and he will not get the touchdown. Nice timing on the hit by 46 there. That was really good stuff. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You busted out the fake field goal? Richard Hewitt could not get the pass off. Oh, man. I, I get it, though. I wish we would just go for it, though, if that was the energy we were feeling there. All right, Green Bay will take over. That is rough to have such a good drive result in zero points. Packers football drive number two, Aaron Jones. That's a good play for us. And it's Jones to the right side. Daniil Hunter latches on to make the tackle. Thought he had first down yardage there. So can we force a Green Bay punt? Third down for Rodgers. 
He throws across the middle for a first down to QT. The fake to Jones on first down. Harrison Smith is right there. That didn't work. Second down and off the mark from Rodgers to set up third and 11. Just please don't drop eight in coverage and think you'll get away with it again. Oh, here comes the blitz. Rodgers up the seam for a first down. The fake to Jones with Harrison Smith applying pressure. That's Christian Watson first down. See, why don't the Packers just run this offense? Instead of the uh, OPI screens, they seem to call 20 times a game. Rodgers under a little bit of pressure, and that forces the errant throw. Can they finally stall out here? Four-man rush. Rodgers outside. Not going to have it. Oh, I forgot they might go for it there. That's my bad. I'm so used to the just, like, kick it on fourth down logic. But they got a three-yard run from Aaron Jones, so the drive not over yet. That's caught inside the 10. Vikings trying to generate more press rush. Knocked away by Harrison Smith. More blitzing across the middle. We're just getting picked apart there. They're not having to throw it outside the numbers all that much. Rodgers. He will throw it for a touchdown. Aaron Jones coming back for the football. Yeah, we're just not making any defensive plays. That was a 16-play drive. That took forever, almost seven minutes. Got to play better than this. Green Bay has all the momentum on their side, and this is Dalvin with a five-yard run. Third down, and Hertz throws it open. That is caught. Quan Alexander, the main target for Jalen Hurts. On first down, a little pressure, and Jalen Hurts takes the massive loss. Four on the rush. Hurts in trouble again. More lost yardage inside the 20. This is ugly football here. Third and 34. You gotta try getting pass interference. Or a roughing. This is intercepted. We'll see the penalty. Could the Packers have just bailed us out? Oh my, they did. A third and 34. It sucks that penalties are some of the biggest momentum swinging kind of plays in the NFL. Not sure what you do about that, but it's just unfortunate that's kind of the reality with pass interference and personal fouls and automatic first downs. Jalen on second down, swings it out. Dalvin gets away. And it's a pretty good play to get something out of that. But hey, we got the receiving talent. Someone's got to be open for Jalen Hurts here. Third and seven. Rolling outside. He wants to turn the corner and he gets it himself. Four-man rush. Dalvin Cook's fourth catch. It goes for eight. Dalvin. I think he's the difference maker in this game. If he just gets enough carries... For enough touches. He's already at 12, so already in line for a massive workload. Rolling away. There goes Hertz again. And he gets the first down. Please slide next time. So we have first downs on this drive via a roughing the passer and a couple third down scrambles by Jalen Hertz. Now trying to cap things off. Hertz fires outside to Alexander. Empty on second down. Higgins, there he is, gets away. And the Packers take him down at the three. On first and goal, Hurts now works to his left. It's a dangerous throw that is incomplete. And right guard, J.D. McGraw is shaken up and will leave the game. 
three-yard line now with a bunch on the right side. We'll keep it in the air again. Jefferson may have had a chance. Hurts has to get rid of it. It's third and goal. Too many tight ends. Unless you're throwing a fade to Jefferson, which we aren't. We're going to throw it, though. Touchdown! Wide open is Herb Smith. How is he that open, though? And it's a shoulder injury for J.D. McGraw, so his day is done. And the Vikings' offensive line will be even weaker the rest of the way. Keeping this a one-score game here is pretty important. Packers have the ball, a minute 19 left to go. And Rodgers starts with a solid completion. And a penalty at the end. What? They just called delay a game against the defense, but cost them five yards. What is this bug, Madden? This is a new one. And they have to use a timeout. That couldn't have worked any better for us. Thanks to a bug that I've never seen before. Somebody call the exterminator. First and 15. Rodgers off the mark. Third down and 14 for Green Bay. And they just run it now. Vikings wisely use a timeout. What a momentum swing this could be at the end of the first half if we can add on. I mean, we have timeouts. So if you can get Jefferson for 20 yards, set yourself up for something, you got to think that Higgins or Jefferson are due for a big play here at some point. First down to start. Going the short way there, and that didn't get us anywhere. Thankfully, it stopped the clock. Five wide, including Dalvin Cook. And Hertz will throw it to Higgins. That helps. From the 42-yard line, Hertz across the middle. They'll have to burn their last time out, or they fumble it. Jefferson lost the ball, and the Packers have it. So again, back and forth we go. Opportunity Green Bay with one timeout to go. It's a four-man rush. Caught by Watson into field goal range. Remember, their kicker has 75 accuracy. He does have a strong leg. This is a 53-yard try. Up and away. And no good. Last play of the first half then. Jalen Hurts as time expires. How far does it go? To the end zone! A penalty! They really called that! On the defense! What is this first half? What is this? Yes, get us to the next play. So, you know, do you go for the field goal here or the touchdown? We're going for the near guaranteed points. 14-10. What a wild end of the first half that was. Thanks to that penalty and everything that followed, we're in this game now going into the second half. And Green Bay is getting off to a pretty good start, it appears. Christian Watson made a play. They're running the football well. Darius Slayton, 24. We'll jump into this Packer drive then and see how it ends. They'll hand it to a receiver. That's Darius Slayton. And they'll get four. Rodgers on second down. Across the middle where we've been picked apart all day. Touchdown, Slayton. There's just no presence in the middle of the field today. We have two hook zones on this play. The linebackers are responsible. And uh, we have Asamoah. He's the one who blows this coverage. I mean, this is his general area here that he's responsible for, and he just gets sucked in by the drag. And if he's, uh, you know, here at the goal line, at least he can possibly take away that window. Vikings down 11. We'll start some simulating here with Minnesota. Second and 12. We get 12 exactly. 
but it wasn't enough 12. And then we couldn't get one and punt it. Oh no. Now it's a penalty against us. Green Bay around midfield. I think for us to win this game, Packers basically need to be done scoring. Penalty. You gotta be kidding me giving up 26 on third and 24. Oh man. That is, that's impossible. Packers around the red zone again, 21-10. Do anything to not give the ball to Aaron Jones. I swear, that's the Packers' entire offensive plan. Now they run it with Jones, and he falls down, running into his own blocker. Third down, I think we're blitzing Harry. Can anybody take away the middle? Third and six. Pressure's too late. Pass caught. One of the problems here is we're just not getting pressure early in the play. And again, like, the linebackers are doing weird stuff. Well, we have Montez Sweat dropping here. So, he's supposed to, you know, take care of this general area. But he drifts so far away. We have two defenders on top of each other covering nobody. What's the point? Gotta take a look at some of those zone calls we have. And then who's, uh... Who's running them? Don't let that be the play. Is all I ask. Two deep safeties for what reason? Second and goal, Green Bay from the six. Back to the air and across the middle. That was better coverage, but throw was right on the money. See, I get worried when they go empty here because we haven't gotten pressure and they just throw it across the middle. On third and goal, Rodgers... Oh, that happened again? They break off and Jones just runs back to give Aaron the open look. Yeah, this game is uh is not going well. They've scored that touchdown exactly twice. So it's not looking good. We're down 18 here in the fourth quarter. And there's a chance we just get Richard Hudick in the game to close it out if we don't score on this drive. Jalen's going to run across the 30 and slides down. This is kind of how you expect this game to go, just on paper. You were hoping there were a couple more surprises as we almost lose possession there. But still, we look like we're uh, a couple of tiers below Green Bay as a football team. Third and nine, Hertz escapes the rush and will do it again. Across the 40, still going into Packer territory. You score a touchdown here, you'll keep me... Uh, You'll have my attention still the rest of the game. That's going to be almost picked off. Intended for Higgins. Screen for Dalvin. Blockers are set up and he'll follow them. Maybe too closely. Jefferson's in the backfield on third down. Wide open. Herb Smith Jr. On first down. Hurts. Feeling the pressure, wants to reset, he'll throw it, and there's Smith again inside the five. That was an interesting play. It looked like he was rattled and wanted to leave, and then decided, no, I'm going to settle down. We give it to Dalvin. Can't get in. 34 yards. The first few carries were uh, a little misleading for how this game would go. Second and goal. Hurts, touchdown, Greg Crossin does it again. So the Vikings are not done yet. Kind of wish we had gone for two there, but now we're down 11. There have been a couple times now where we're so close to maybe seeing Richard Hudick again, but Jalen Hurts then does what he needs to do. He played well against Buffalo. We needed the touchdown there. He gave it to us. On a really good possession. So now it's an 11-point game. But the defense has been atrocious. I think I got to put in Dion Robinson because we're not getting the pass rush from the starters. That's a better run play. There are just no sacks or turnovers for the defense today. Rodgers wide open again inside the Viking 40. 
At some point, Aaron Jones is going to get the football. Probably here. Yeah, just kidding. Christian Watson's got a lane. Tried to shake Harrison Smith there. Slowed him down. Handed off to Tunyon or something then. It's not going to be Jones, right? Nope. Quick pass to QT. They'll throw it again on second down. They have not run it with Jones, period, on this drive, and that just lost a few. And on third down, another throw in coming, and Rodgers is off the mark. He has missed a few of those. Field goal try is up and good. 31-17, we need two touchdowns unanswered, which just feels impossible. Jalen Hurts trying to follow up a good touchdown drive, and that's not the start we wanted to see right there. On second and 12, he gets it out there to Alexander, and it's third and six upcoming. Four down territory, obviously. Really quiet days here for Jefferson and T. Higgins. Four and change left to play. Hurts, he's going to get out of there, and he converts again. Jalen Hurts is your leading rusher now. Well, he has been the entire day. It's first down, Minnesota. Hurts knocked down by Jair Alexander. Let's do it again. Swung out, and Dalvin gets away. Everything after contact. Seven for 29. He can't get anything on those catches. Third and six, and Hertz is sacked. Fourth down. Gotta have this one. Hertz steps up. He throws it deep, and it's tipped away from Alexander. Incomplete. Green Bay ball. And the Packers have added a long field goal to make this game pretty much a win. Richard Hudick will come in for the final plays of the game. But this was never a game where it felt like we were going to win. Hudick under pressure. Throws it right to a defender and it was somehow incomplete. Hudick. Throwing it across the middle, and that's a hookup with Jefferson. Just trying to get him experience, and I want to watch him play. He gets taken down by Kenny Clark. 32 on the clock now. Hudick. Yikes. What is this? Two of these plays have been so ugly. Like, that looks like a backup quarterback playing type of bad. Third and 13. But he's got an arm. Timeout. It just seems like so much around him has to go well, though. At the first sign of pressure, it feels like he's really in trouble. We'll call a timeout, so we'll probably get one more completion if we don't use the sideline. But the Vikings are up to the 31. And it's going to be dumped for more garbage yardage. And the game is over. Well, not yet. Two seconds. Hudick, one more throw. 360, and he got it there. The stats look really good. The two incompletions were very ugly plays. And the Vikings lose the game by 17. So Green Bay is still just too much for us to handle. Almost every play, the quarterback is reacting to pressure in one way or another. And that's just not a winning recipe. We've got to get this offensive line better. And Green Bay is one of those teams that's just always going to put that stress on us. Rodgers had a phenomenal day. We couldn't put the same kind of pressure on him in any capacity. When we blitzed, I kind of had to cringe because it was like, I don't trust this to get there. And it didn't. I don't think he was sacked a single time in this game. Quan Alexander was the high volume target here and Dalvin. Those are like the two shortest guys on the field, depth-wise, your slot receiver and the running back, and then the tight end. So the guys who are trying to get downfield more, they combine for six catches and 58 yards. No sacks for Minnesota. No interceptions. 
A handful of tackles for loss in the running game. But one ugly loss. Interesting. So our morale is still stable after that loss. Somehow. We drop to 5-4 and four on the season, and we get Green Bay, or no, we get Detroit, Arizona, San Francisco in our next game. So hopefully we can beat the Lions. And then you got uh, some tough teams there. Cardinals and San Francisco can be a challenge. And then Dallas, of course. I mean, Micah Parsons facing us sounds terrifying. But that, everybody, is going to about wrap this one up. Vikings, you know, they moved from 3-3 three and three to 5-4. and four. Win percentage got better today. Uh, Richard Hudick got a little more playing time in that one sim game he did well. In those seven throws we just saw, five were complete. Like, he, uh, he made a couple plays there for sure. But I think that uh, we're going to keep things the way that we've had them. Richard Hudick will remain QB2. Hopefully we can get Jefferson going more because this just has not been good enough for our star playmaker. And defensively, disappointed in the pass rush. They have to do more. But that's it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a great day.